lot of other companies that's in that same way. You know, I've heard of, you know, companies in uh, Willis Tower that they just rented and, and there's absolutely no one in there. Let's focus a little more forward thinking and um, talk about the, you know, the post pandemic plan. Um, what does that look like? How are your plans changing? What are you doing to address, you know, like we talked about the culture and the people. Um, so just get your thoughts on that. So let's start with Mia. The beauty of, I hate to say beauty, but the beauty of what's happened over the course of the past nine months is that we've really understood we could work remotely and be effective. And there was a culture that we had um, specifically in the technology organization that being remote meant you may not be working as hard as everyone else. And so I do feel that the organization has realized that and they're really looking at what does it mean to have a workforce in the future? Where do we really need to have facilities? And do we have too many facilities? Um, so that's a really good uh, piece of news because, you know, there's opportunities for us to move wherever we want to, come into the office uh, when it's necessarily necessary, but not necessarily have to live near a location. Um, I think some of the challenges that I think will happen is if we have a mix of people in the office and not in the office. So one of the challenges early on, or at least in my experience, is we have people all over the, the world. And when you're 50% in the office and then you have people on phones or on Teams or Zoom, the people on the Zoom calls or on the Teams calls, they don't actually get their voice heard equally. So I'm really interested in looking at what does it look like in the future? How do we maintain this equal ability to communicate without kind of drowning out the voices because you've got three or four people in the room? To the point, though, that was discussed, we're looking at a July time frame. How many people will be in the office? Will we able be able to meet in rooms? I think all of those will be things that come up. But again, as we get closer to the new normal, it's really about making sure we maintain that level of communication uh, and transparency across the world. The company has moved more from a 20, 30 percent remote to probably being more of a 60, 70 percent remote, even post pandemic. Now, for that, I've, I personally have always been, a, no, I need my security people here. I like to reach out and touch them. And, you know, if they want to work from home it, once in a while, that's fine. But now, well, given the success and the ability to be flexible and work remotely, I've even talked it over with my CEO. We're not past looking beyond the state boundaries, which is kind of a newer, it's newer concept for us. But that what that does really open up the talent pool because we, we are in Arkansas. We have a smaller talent pool. And um, it would be nice for us to reach out across the state boundaries, allow them to work remotely since we've already established that model, and then realizing we can do incident response, we can do monitoring, we can do all that remotely. Uh, whereas before, we were a little skittish on trying to just, just, we just hadn't had that chance or the opportunity to really apply it. But now we're forced into it and we see that it can work. So it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out for us over the next couple of years. You know, for us, you know, we our big operations center, you know, we had 350 to 400 people in there. And throughout this, we've had maybe 25 to 30 people in that same building. And there's a lot of other companies that's in that same way. You know, I've heard of, you know, companies in uh, Willis Tower that they just rented and and there's absolutely no one in there, you know, and, you know, all that office space. And that's going to be something that we'll see, I think, a lot, at least for the next few years where, there's going to be a lot of available office space that'll be out there that's going to be vacant. And the work from home is, is going to be a, a key component to uh, for businesses. And so you're going to see probably a lot more operational efficiencies, too, because of you know lower overhead costs and everything. Uh, you know, for us, you know, we're not going to even reevaluate going back into the office until June. Uh, the CIO has say, said that probably most of IT will not go back in, at least not full time. So there might be a couple of days a week someone might go, you know, be in the office and we'll be in a more of a shared workspace. Uh, and, you know, as we move into 2021, I mean, we'll we'll keep looking at those gaps that we have and fill those gaps and risks that we need to do and adjust with that, bring in whatever tools that we need to to help adjust and, and be able to monitor what we're doing. And uh, otherwise, you know, it's it's kind of really business as usual. You know, we're we're uh, you know focusing on our uh, small businesses that we uh, work so closely with now, and family-owned businesses, and we'll just keep doing what we're doing and and working with our customers.